Hello, you're watching Crafts at Home with Lisa. Um, what we're here to do today is make a donkey. Um, this little fella. Quite easy to make. Beautiful little thing. And it's out of Fimo clay, so it's hard. Once baked, brilliant. Quite, I wouldn't say indestructible, but he's uh, okay to be handled, that's why. Um, he's still got to be sprayed with uh, top spray, yeah. But I thought I'd wait and do this one and then do them both together. Okay, so we'll put him down here so we can just sort of see him there. So here's a ball of Fimo clay that my husband has just mixed for me because I can't do it due to the arthritis in my hands. Just white and grey, uh, white and black together. Just white, just plain white and plain black. Um, just mix together, make a great donkey. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure when you split it into pieces you do enough left over for the head and there's enough left over for the legs and the ears. Otherwise you'll end up in uh, a bit of trouble because you'll never mix that colour again unless you weigh it out. Um, I'm a bit more of a spontaneous kind of gal so I uh, just hope for the best and mix what I've got. So we're going to do that uh, leave about that much I think would be ample for the legs. So this one I'm going to try and do something different. I made this one, made his head and then stuck his head on. But this one I want to try and um, do it in one piece. So we're just going to squeeze it all into place together just warm it up nicely hold it in your hands and that will warm it up um, the warmer it is the better it gets if it gets too sticky you can use talc or um, which I use corn flour um, only because I have the corn flour to hand and uh, I don't know it just works for me okay so we're gonna try and roll it into a ball my Rottweiler's big bottom just pushed the camera, sorry about that. So, like so, you're going to roll it into a kind of a ball, like so. <clears throat> okay, so we got, and again, goodness me, um, we've got a bit of a ball there. So we want a body and we want a head out of it. I don't know that that's going to be enough, to be honest. I might steal a little bit more. Mm. Just roll it out and just see. Make sure it's enough there. Because I don't want to get caught short. Back leg, back leg. Hmm. Just one, two. Yeah, it should be okay. Stealing a little bit is always a dangerous game. In fact, I don't know that I'm confident enough to take that amount out of him, so I just put a little bit back because um, I really don't want to get caught without any leg colour. Okay, so we're going to try that again. We're going to roll it into a ball. This is getting a bit softer now. White is always the hardest to uh, control and soften up. Black is always the easiest because I think the pigment must be fairly high in a black. Um, so it's always fairly soft. This stuff's brilliant. Look, you just rub it on any creases you've got and any lines and they, they just go. I really love this stuff. Um, I'm used to working with fondant. So this is an absolute dream to work with, I have to say. That's it. And then just push it in. Okay, right, so we're looking really for that sort of shape, just down to the end of his nose. Okay, so body, neck, might look a bit bulbous to start with, but we'll get there. Make sure you just take your time, because there is no hard and fast rules here, there's no... Um, it's just a case of 
just playing with it and getting it into the position you want it just rub it and it, it will it will go it will go into into what you're looking for okay so you want a bit of a head going on in this one okay Not as easy as I thought it might be. Okay, let's push him in so he has got a bit of a chest, but we don't want too much. Okay, got that crap underneath. This is the time where, if you've got any cracks anywhere, now's the time to push it and pull it about. My cat just coming through the window. Okay, so right, I'm going to use a bit of corn flour. Okay, I'd like mine sat up this time. I've got one that's led down, I'd like a sat up one. Okay, there we go. Right, so we're getting into the, sh bit into the shape now that we're, we're looking for. Okay. Just sweep over any cracks that you've got or any joins or anything like that. So just okay. It looks like it's gonna be a left down one again. So we'll just go with it. And don't forget we're gonna put a white bit on the end of his nose there, look. So we don't have to worry about Doing the white bit on the end of his nose, that's going to be there already, okay? I find clay work very relaxing, but at the same time can be very frustrating if on sometimes it just doesn't go. What I might do is thin him out, you don't want him to be too fat. Um, You want it a smooth, fairly smooth transaction down the back of his neck because that's where you're going to put his mane. Okay. Right, there we go. Just getting rid of any little lumps and bumps and whatnot. Little indent where his lap bell legs are going to sort of sit. Make sure if you're looking down on him from straight from the front, he's. Uh, pretty uh, even. Remember if you've got a crack and it just doesn't seem to be going with your finger, use a bit of corn flour because it's abrasive or talc, whichever one you're using. Um, and it, it's just abrasive enough to get rid of it. So, right, If you look at this fella from the back, he's uh, quite a good size. You don't want him too fat. But you do want him to have a bit of a bum on him with a bit of a waistline. So we'll do that now. Okay. And then we'll tuck him under. When you, you he's on the floor or on the on the mat, um make sure he hasn't got such like a the transition to the mat is not like completely flat. There it is, boom. Not that you'll see much of it because when his legs go on, it'll hide a lot. Okay. So I'm just going to play about with his face a little bit. There wasn't a huge amount of a dip on this one. I don't think this one's going to be quite as big, but we'll see what happens. Just brushing it up. And again, look from the front. And from all angles, make sure he's straight. And then use a little bit of corn flour just to make sure it all flows into one.
try not to get any major finger marks on him and try and get him so he's rounded as much as possible so there's no like square edging and that sort of thing to him because that's what you won't be able to hide that it um, will come back and haunt us okay so I'm starting to feel like that's starting to look a bit like my other donkey because we're going to have ears and everything all on this one so a lot of it will be hidden you want a nice sort of back so when you put the, the mane on it makes it much easier some people do the mane in one whole piece I don't like doing that I think it gives it more character um, individual bits so we'll be doing that again but I will do the tail differently this time I'm going to do that as one whole piece um, okay so I think I'm fairly happy with that the trouble is you could look at it over and over and see lots of things that you don't like about it and that and lots of things this that, and the other but don't forget at the moment it's a very very basic shape of what you're looking for it will transition into so as you put parts on and as you make the parts and and uh, so forth so my donkey's got a bit of a twist to him which is better than i give him a bit of a different shape um, my daughter's probably going to steal both of these or my mum, she's a very big donkey fanatic and she does like, um, she like donkeys see I've got a bit of crack under there, well it's a bit of a crease that's all if it won't go be just your fingers use a tool, just sort of deepen it down it doesn't matter if you leave marks in it from the top because I'm going to get rid of that with your, nail, with your finger okay see there we go and that's gone as well Actually, we've got a bit more of a defined chin now. Okay. That seems to be my favourite word. I do apologise. Right. So you're getting rid of any cracks, anything like that. Don't panic too much on the back, because like I say, it'll be hidden underneath his uh, neck hair, his mane. Okay. Okay. Right. So I think I'm happy with that. So just dip it in there where you know your green legs are going to go. Okay. Ears here. So I just need a little bit of a white nose, which I'm going to do next because I like to get the main sort of part of him in place. We're going to use a little bit of white anyway on his feet. <clears throat> so before we put his hooves on, a little bit of white and then the black hoof. Just gives it a nice finish. I mean, if you've got brown, you could do brown hoofs, um, things like that. Oh, dear me, this is really hard again. I've got a bit of pink over here, but it's a bit of a pickle because it's covered in grey. Um, if we can mix it around and see what happens when we come to do his ears. The inside of his ears. We'll, uh, we'll go from there, I think. We're going to put the pink in before we put it on the donkey. You mustn't forget his little eyebrows and that. The other one I did, which has pictures of it on um, Instagram, which my Instagram page details are below, um, is pretty, he's pretty cool. He looked a bit sort of dippier than this one. I think this one, I don't know whether to have teeth in him or not. I don't know. But we'll see what we get, what we end up with. See what he looks like with his nose on. We're going to make this a bit of a bulbous nose. Because that's what they are like. My last one had a bit of a more bulbous nose and he looked a bit cheekier. Oh, there's a moth coming through the window. Hello. There's been some big moths about tonight. I got bombarded with one earlier one that was huge, it was the size of a juggernaut. Okay. Right, so snap a bit off. Break a bit off, snap a bit off. Right, you want to roll it into a ball. It will get softer the more you, you keep it warmer and, and sort of play with it a little bit. Okay. So, we're going to have a flat edge, 
We're going to just measure it up against. Oh, here's my other cat. I do apologise. And just see what that's going to look like. Um, I think that might be all right. It might be a little bit big, so we'll just pinch a little bit off. <coughs> right, let's roll it into the ball first. Uh, well, some sort of ball. And then we're going to flatten down the back. Okay, I'm going to round this up so it's more rounded and it's ready more to perhaps to take the white. Oops. It's not so easy. This bit. I'm just going to push it on. Oh, and that one's... My floor's clean. Let me try that again. We're just measuring up right now, and then in a minute we're gonna put some of this Fimo stuff on. Let's see how that sort of lands on there. Round into a ball. I kind of want it a little bit smaller because it's coming down into not perhaps that small. But it's not kind of the, a massive piece. I don't think that's big enough now. I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, let's try again. Let's try to get it so it looks so you're happy with it. It's really pretty much entirely what, what you kind of feel like you want to do. Um, let's try it again. fit on there quite nicely now. He's got a square sort of end to him on the end of his nose. You can see he's a bit of a square sort of end. Right. I'll kind of just sort of play about with it then and get it so it's On there. At the moment, he's starting to look a bit like a duck. Well, if I do him that way, it makes him look angry, so he's got to go the other way. I don't want an angry donkey. I don't know if that's a bit long, actually. Let's just chop the end off a little bit. Way too long. Okay. And if I just roll it. Just to give it a nice finish on the end. Oh, now it's stuck to me. See, we all get into a pickle at some point or another. It wouldn't be artwork if you didn't. So that way, just above his eyes. That's it. Lovely. And that one, that side. Okay. Two eyes. 
I'll have another go at his nostrils because I don't feel very happy about these. They need just something going over the top of them. They've just not got that bit. They literally just need that. I'm going to put a little glue, only a little bit, just on the top of each mushroom. I don't want too much of us you end up inundated with it. And I'll actually push that in the hole. That's better. It looks fine in the hole. Just felt like he needed a nostril or something stuck up. So do some about the same the other side. She says. I think he's got a bit of a black nostril going on there, actually. Oh, I played with a black, didn't I? Oh, poop. Uh, I'm not peeling it off now. It's a very good nostril. Right, so we're going to make another one. Just a little one. Very easy to make, it's just very simple. In the hole, like the other one. Oh, I might have to peel that other nostril off because it's bleeding. nostril. A little finger in there just to straighten it out in the nostril hole. Okay, Mr. Dirty Nostril, out you come. Okay, <laughs> got a very dirty look. Oh no, I don't want to contaminate that bit. <coughs> Use that bit's very light. Okay. There we go. In the hole. Flatten it down. Bring the sides round. There we go, it's coming now. At least it's white now. That's better. Yeah, that's much better. Right. Oh, one looks much bigger than the other now. Right, let's just push the nose down there and that should eke it open a little bit. Enough to, to even them out a little bit anyway. Okay, that's 
looks happier now. Just didn't look right before. Slightly bigger than the other, but there we go. That sorts that out. Okay, so this is what we've got. Nostrils are sorted now. Eyes, eyebrows are on. So the next thing to do would be ears. Okay. Well, I think now we're going to have a go at doing his legs which will just shore him up to sit because the mine's front heavy at the moment okay so we need some grey which has now gone uh, hard again very frustrating So you want it fairly long, you don't want skinny little legs, so we do the front legs first because they're the ones that tuck inside the back legs, okay. So you like I say, you don't want skinny little legs but you do want um, nice chunky legs. They've got to be a good size, really. I think they're probably going to be too small. Let's turn it round and look at the other end. When you do it, just make sure you've got enough to get, to get two out of it. Just sort of measure it up. So there's one. So one's going to be about there, because you don't want them too long. And then the next one's going to be about uh, there. Okay, so there's your front legs. Just make sure they're all nice and, and straight. Okay, so what we're going to do we've got now is... I'm going to just scathe a little edge of it off. Just a little bit like that just so that it's going to sit flat um, to his body okay don't forget these got to have hoofs on so if they seem a little bit small it's okay so just straighten so just kind of straighten them up so they're nice and nice and straight up against the other one and then just cut the edge off the edge off like that and then just like I say make it nice and straight nice and neat and then make sure they're the same size I've got one slightly fat than the other so just either push this one down like so or I think that one's a little bit longer than that one Oh no, it's not the actual legs, okay. It's this top bit here, okay. So just kind of cut it and then sort of marry it up, that's all. So if you can see that. Okay, so now we should have two dumpy little legs. Like I said, don't worry if they don't look very big. You've got to have um, hoofs on them yet, so little bit of glue on this flat bit here you don't want too much otherwise it just squidges out and then you can't get rid of it a little bit on this one remember we're not using PVA glue this time we're using the Fimo liquid All right. and I have to say it's the first time I've used it so it's actually working out rather good I'm not going to lie okay so the first one we're going to just pop it on 
just not at the front, just a little way back, and then just sweep it. Just so it's kind of on, like that. Oh dear, there's my daughter, you can hear. Right, okay, so we've swept it down. I really want my horse's head to stand a little bit, uh, donkey's head to stand a little bit higher than that, but it's just not going. It's very frustrating. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. And then this one, exactly the same this side. Try and get it so they're both relatively straight. Okay. And then brush the sides down. Okay. So you make sure they're both the same sort of size. I like mine sort of tucked inwards a little bit, but personal choice. Okay, so so far now that's got a front legs on. So back legs. Well I'm about the same thickness, but don't forget you've got a little bit of a back leg um like this bit here. The other side's probably a better area to look at. So you've got this bit here and then your leg. Alright. Okay. Just gives them a bit, little bit of stability by putting those on. Oh no, the phantom nose, I've caught it. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> okay, hang on then. I think we recovered it well there. Or not. Okay. Pulled his nose out again. I'm going to close this nose hole up a little bit because I don't think we need one quite that big. Okay, it's got a little bit of white still over here. Oh, that looks a bit better. Okay, so I've got a little bit of white. I'm just going to roll it around my fingers. Get your fingers up his nose and, and sort of flatten him out. Okay. Okay. And we're just going to cut the back of it off. Like that. Pop a little bit of glue back in there. Then we really need a little bit. I'm going to pop his new nostril in there. There we go, that's better. Goodness me, I really do hold my breath when I do these things. Let's be thankful that it goes on better than what we expected, otherwise I'd have uh, suffocated by now. Okay, there we go. Right, so back to his back legs. So we're going to roll this out. Again, not too thick but not too thin and bearing in mind you've got to get his back leg on there okay the back this this bit here oh you can't see it there yeah so we're looking at, at this bit here all right so i reckon that should do it again you don't want them too long kind of measure it up so you're gonna have a back leg there and his front leg's going to come down to about there so i reckon about that. 
once you've cut one, measure it up against the other one, just cut the next one so you get the right size. There we go. Okay, so what I do is I squish mine together because it always comes out longer than what you wanted it to. And then flatten it like this. Just kind of flatten it round. But you don't want it completely flat because this... And I like a little lump in mine, so... So that's pretty much one leg done. If you see, just sort of round it off if you're on the flat edges. I like to put a little little dip in mine there. It doesn't always stay, but um, the thought's there when I put it on. By the time you finish squishing everything about, it's usually gone. Right, don't forget again, this has got to have a hoof and everything on it. So just marrying it up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, which bit was it now? Probably just picked up the wrong bit, not the bit I had earlier on at all. It doesn't feel very thick, that doesn't. I don't know. What we'll do is make one out of the other one as well and see which one fits the best. Pretty sure that that is not the one we want. It's got to be this one. Okay. So pull your other one over. Make sure this is all nice and rounded and flat on the end. Okay. So just make sure they're the right sort of. I don't know. That one seems a lot smaller than that one. Perhaps it was these two. Hmm, I picked up the wrong bit to start with. It doesn't seem big enough. Oh dear, I got myself into a right pickle here. So you want to make sure that's round. You want nice chunky back legs. So they're going to look really squishy to much to start with because they've got um, back hooves come in. And the good thing is if you feel like they're a bit too small, well that seems a bit fat actually there. If you feel like they're a bit too small, you can just thick, put thicker hooves on. Or like the white bit I've put on here, which we're going to do. Right, that's that. Always pull it out a little bit, otherwise you'll never get a hoof on it. Oh, I think that'd be alright, wouldn't it? It's going to come out to about here. Not happy with it. This seems a bit big for what it actually is. There we go. Right, so pushed it all down to the leg. So you make quite a fat leg now. And don't forget, mine's quite small as well. My donkey's not, well, I don't know, I suppose looking at the other donkey, it's not actually much in it. Okay. So. There we go, look. That's better. All right, okay. Oh, 
them just make sure that they're both relatively about the same size because you don't want um, any even back legs and, and whatnot. I think that looks pretty good to me. I mean, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. My leg's not the same as one leg's not the same as the other leg. Um, and you can't look at both sides at the same time. So I always say that. So if you're worried about it and you can't get them both because exactly the same, don't panic. The idea of this donkey is just a, a free and easy way of making a donkey, enjoying and having a little bit of fun, and at the same time making something that you might like. There we go. Right. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on his back thigh, just the back leg bit, this bit. Because we don't want to put it on the leg because this bit's got to be pulled outwards. <coughs> okay. This one you don't have to make sure it's all tapped down and whatnot. Just have to make sure it's nice and um, just nice and um, bump free, shall we say? You don't want too much of a bump in it, otherwise it'll... Um... It won't look right, and don't forget it. When you put it in the oven, they will remain there forever. Okay, and now we put the other side on. You don't want to run, put these sort of in too much, because they're supposed to be a back leg. Right the other way around so it's a bit flat the wrong side. Um, I have got a pair of tweezers around here somewhere. I can't fathom where they are. So we'll use a knife for now. I've got a hair in it. There we go. So just over that hole. There we go. Right. Make sure you're happy with it. Back leg only. So just this round bit. This thigh leg at the top of his leg. And pop it on. Now from behind, you'll be able to see how much of it is flat and how much of it's not. And how much they relatively size-wise, what they, they're looking like. Okay, so tuck him underneath his, his back leg. And then don't forget about your cornflower just to rub it over and, and get rid of any marks. Oh, yeah, I keep going off the camera because he keeps, every time I rub him, he keeps rubbing and running off that sort of direction. Right, okay. So, now we've got legs on. Looking pretty good now. Well, I'm not happy that one of my feet is a lot bigger than the other. So I'm just going to scathe off the end. Like that. Oh dear. Now I've pulled it off. Right. That goes without saying, folks. You don't need too much of that. This liquid clay. Otherwise, uh, liquid femur. Otherwise, you're kind of just squidging about all over the place for ages. Right, okay. So, we want our back legs out. Just a smidgen. Okay, and if you wanted to, I always put a tool in there and just ease it back at the at the start of the leg. It just look makes it look better rather than making it look like the legs are just sticking out. Just like that. Just like a little gap. There we go, look. That's better. Okay, right. So what do we have left to do? Ears. Okay. We'll finish off his feet in a minute when we turn to doing the... Um, 
when we change the colour. So for now we just want to get it all done in one colour. So out of this little piece of clay that we have left, which is not very much, we've got to get two ears and a tail. Okay, so... When you're rolling stuff down, just put some corn flour down first, otherwise it will stick very badly. And so these are as big as you want them to be, basically. You don't want them to be too big, like thickness. Um, Just trying to think. You just cut down what sort of size you're looking for. Bear in mind, you cut one size, you have to get it straight, and you have to get another one, which is not always as easy as it sounds. Okay, so there's one ear that I've cut, just like that. Look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest it this side. And then I always find that the clay pulls when I do the second one. So I tend to just cut into it. Um, rather than going around cutting it. I could probably do with a new craft knife to be honest. Alright, so just cutting round. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. And then back at that side. Right, so now we should have two relatively the same sort of shaped ears. Yeah, okay. So in the middle of this, we have to put pink. You don't have to, um, it's up to you, but I like to put some pink in the middle. Um, it just gives it a bit more characteristics. So with a tool of some description, just gently push down. Just gently push down again. Because you want to make a slight indent. Because you're needing the pink to sit inside the ear. Right. Not too heavy. Just gently. You don't want to go through. You just want to indent it. Okay, and then you can just get your finger in there and just sort of squash it down a little bit. There we go. Because the outsides, this outsides that the here, we're going to roll that inwards when the pink's in there. I think ears are probably my worst pet hate. I, I really don't like doing ears. Um, they're very fiddly, and I never seem to be able to get them how I want them. So they're not really my my forte ears, aren't? So I'm just trying to be honest with you. So if my ears go peat tong, or you look at them and think, oh dear, well her ears aren't straight. That's why I have no patience for ears. They drive me insane. All right, and I just use my finger. See straight away, I can see that one is bigger than the other. top edge off. That's a bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. We'll just take a little bit more off that top and down that side. And then all you need to do is just that's it. Straighten it up a little bit each way. Alright, I said I don't like ears. They are one of the most awkwardest things to do. Um, and if one is slightly larger than the other, 
you probably won't notice it because it will be folded over like on this one so this is the sort of thing that I'm looking at doing fold them over right so there's two little ears put your grey back together because you've got to make a tail out of that in a minute not that it's going to be huge we're not going to do the tail like this we're going to proper real donkey tail so now all you need is a little bit of pink just a little bit squish it around no, there's no hard and fast rules with this one because you've got to try and cut it the same width as the inside of these bits oh, and now I've got a piece of it. see straight away nothing but aggro okay or you can put that bit on the inside it's obviously come off my roll right so we're going to cut out two very thin pink bits okay and we're somehow going to get it out because I've wound, sort of rolled it very thin okay here we go and uh, right we're going to do that bit again because that didn't work I think I rolled it a little bit too thin so Corn flour, which is always good. We need lots of corn flour. It just dries it out that little bit and stops it being sticky. Right, let's get the grey and everything all off my rolling pin. So we don't want it ever so thin. Oh, don't want it ever so thin, but we do want it thin. So that should do two on that bit. Uh, she says. I mean, you can pinch a little bit. Um, decide and then sort of squidge it in your fingers but I like to do it this way because it's you've got your shape there then straight away okay so out of that comes one and two okay, I'm gonna roll that back up remember little scraps like this they will come in handy in the future for whatever it is you're doing Alright, so don't ever throw any bits away, however small you think they are. Okay, so now you take an ear and you start squashing it. Try not to squash it in the ear because what it will do is make the ear bigger, which you don't want to do. You can squash it between your fingers, um, just trying to keep the shape, or you can just put it on your board and just... So I'll kind of squeeze it and squish it. When you think it looks relatively good, you can pinch the top in or and the bottom, it's up to you. And then just kind of decide which is your top on your ear. Oh, I think that looks alright to me. It says one. Okay. another one so that one you want to just don't be afraid to use your knife if need be if it's not the right shape and you need to put it to the right shape like that needs a, just a little bit of a point on the top um, otherwise it won't, a it won't match and b it'll be aw awfully awkward to, to put in there we go right so let's see what that's going to space it like I think that will be okay there we go okay so you can either use the Fimo liquid or you can just push it about and it will stick 
sometimes it doesn't if you've used a little bit too much um, corn flour but most of the time it, it will and then just go along and just round the edges up a little bit so just curling them over slightly just only ever so slightly and then like so and that gives you your basic shape for your ear okay at the bottom you're going to fold it together like so and we're going to cut that so it's flat okay otherwise you won't have nothing to stick onto your ear so a little bit like that and then you're going to sort of squidge it and then bend it back just a little bit so just like that i decide on my donkey's ear position once it's on the head um Oh, that one's not going to stick, see. It depends. It it's, it's all depends on how much um, you've got um, corn flour on there or talc, whichever one you're using. Um, oh, that seems awfully big now. There we go. Again, so it doesn't matter if it doesn't fit in in in, tire, in its entirety, but you're going to fold these edges over anyway, so don't panic. Pick the best end that you like matches this end, and then fold the other end. Okay, there's my flat bit, and then I'm going to just fold it backwards like that so it gives me something to to roll to all right and there you have two ears okay just tuck your edges down and now decide where you want to put them make sure they're both obviously the same size which mine aren't Mine ones, see, ears, I don't know. They are just like my nemesis. So, so I'm going to just tuck that back up. So they're very easy to make back to size. Very, very easy. Um, you just kind of squidge it together and cut it. And then I do that and just tuck it behind. So just a little bit like that. So that gives me just two ears. It doesn't matter if they're all wrinkled because that's just how... Donkey ears are, and the, to be honest, that's just how my ears are. Not my ears, personally, my donkey ears. Right, so we're going to put it on now. So decide where you want to put them. Make sure you've got no bulbous bits on the back of his head and things like that that you're not happy with. Because this is probably the last chance you'll get to, to straighten it out. So I always make little dents so I can see whereabouts I'd like to put him so I think there and there and my two no see not even that's better so in there and there and you can have them so that they're laying down might have going down ones this time you know um, it's easy just to stand them up lay them down whichever you want try and get rid of the dip that you've made in you don't want it too dipped Otherwise it'll be a nightmare and you won't be able to get rid of it. So I'm just going along now because I've made two di big dips. There we go. And don't forget, it may look like a lot of back of his head, but we've got hair to put down there. We're going to put a mane down there. So, Right, he's stood in his own ear. So I'm going to put mine going downwards this time. So a little bit of glue because it's only a little bit of the ear that's actually stuck on there and if you put too much on it will just keep sliding about and, and fall off so I'm going to put my shape on now roll it up bend it over do what you need to do And then with a tool, just sweep it down. That's all you're doing, just sweeping the edges down so it's just nice and, and neat. 
just gently. And if you leave lines in it, don't worry, you can go along with it afterwards and just use your finger to straighten out the lines. I think this donkey's going to look a bit of a sad one, and I well, it makes me a bit sad. I don't like sad things. Okay. too much of this clay, liquid clay on there. Might have to wipe some off in a second. is going to work. Oh, now I've rubbed off the other side as well. Right, don't forget as well, don't panic too much. As long as it's on there, you've got fur coming up this side. So what I'll do is just make sure that the fur goes between the ears. So it kind of hides it a little bit. Okay. Just make sure he's well on there. There we go. And then just squeeze them together. So they look. So you just look and see how you want your donkey's ears. Remember, don't rush. Again, this is the biggest... Um, hint and tip I can give you take your time if it means you've got to go and come back to it that's fine don't forget it doesn't go hard until you put it in the oven so you have all that time as much time really as you as you need don't rush because if you rush it just won't look right Because it doesn't go hard, it's just amazing stuff to mess and play with. And for doing things like this, if you're struggling, it um, walk away from it. Come back to it when you're you're feeling better. Go and have a cup of tea. And um, have a little sort of break from it. Okay. So I've got my ears on. I'm not sure how skewy they look. That one looks very skewy, so it's got to come off and be moved up. That's very annoying. But again, something that's good about this clay is you can just pull it up, start again, reposition. That's better. Because mine's got his head on the tilt, I wanted him looking to the side. I put the ears so they were symmetrical, neck like opposite each other. But because his head is on the tilt, it makes it um, sat wrong. Okay, so I think what we're going to do next is let's get his legs. His oh, let's go put his tail on first. Then we'll be finished with the grey then. I have to excuse my recording, there is a thunderstorm going on. Okay. So we're going to actually put him a proper tail on. So I just want to break off a little bit. Alright. I 
and we're going to make a little hole. Only a little one in his bottom. If you can just see that. Just so we can get the end of the tail in. Right. Now as for doing the um, hair on the end of this one, I, this is something I've never done before. So I've never done a real tail on him before, like a proper donkey tail. So it's just going to be a bit long like that. And I'm going to leave a bit of a slant on the end because then I'm just going to stick bits on the end and, and make a like his mane on this one. I'm just going to do this on the end of his tail so it's got a bit of hair. So we're going to pop a little bit of glue on it. Just a little bit, just to get it in there. Okay. okay. Just so we can fit it in there. Donkey's tails are actually quite short. They're not very long at all. So that's a bit... Okay, so I'm just going to pop it in there like that. And I want the, the tail of it to be on the, the base because when we put the, the hair on it, I want it to be able to just sit on the, on the floor, well, on the side. Okay, goodness me, that's getting close, that uh, thunder. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. You're never going to get rid of the uh, line that's going around at the moment. You can make it not as noticeable. Just brush it around. Sometimes you can use brushes, um, which I have used in the past, but you've got to use quite a coarse one, and sometimes you can leave lines in the, the clay. But if I just show you, you want a fairly softish one. Um, no. So just that sort. Just a normal paintbrush, and then you can just give it a little bit of welly when you put it on, and it just smooths everything out a little bit and brushes it down at the same time. So it doesn't like make uh, too much of a lines in it, but it does allow you to just sweep it down just backwards and forwards. Like I say, if be careful, where's my cat Teddy? Be careful doing it because if you've got too much of a coarse brush, you will leave lines in it. But it's, it's good if you want to tap down any areas that you're not happy with. Okay. Right. Teddy bear. Honestly come in because of the thunder. I do have another one. She's probably outside. She's a bit more um, braver than our Ted. Our Ted's a bit of a wuss. Okay. Yeah. So, next thing we're going to do then is, I think we'll do the feet. So we need a little bit more black because we we'll do a white ring and then a black ring. So just a white ring. It makes the hoof stand out really nicely. This is like... Ugh. And always use up any black bits you've got left over or anything like that. And don't forget, black makes your hands dirty. So use... I always have a pack of baby wipes to hand just to give me hands a wipe over because it leaves terrible, terrible black marks on your hands. And just make sure that when you, you do it, you've got a clean, otherwise, you'll get, end up with. I think there's a blue mark in the, the other donkey. Oh, there's a bin under there. Yeah, there's a blue mark in my other donkey if you look, just on his back, um, back paw. You see it on the white bit there. I don't know how I've got blue on it because it's not like I've even got any blue clay because I don't use blue very often. So I don't know what that is or even where it's came from. So we just put in there. Okay, so warm up your, your white because obviously it's it's always when it goes back to it's cold. So which makes it extraordinarily hard. I'm just holding it in my hand at the moment and just cleaning a bit off my desk. So I don't want it to turn any other colour than white. That includes pink. Okay. So what we're going to do is roll it into a, um, a sausage. And we're just going to cut the ends off. That's all we want, just a thin end 
Yeah, see, look, all that trying to... And I've still got black in it. Right. So, we don't want it too thin. So, if you cut it too thin, it doesn't matter. We're just going to cut one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, these, because they're just literally um, going before the actual hoof, it can be made smaller, bigger, thicker, thinner. You can cut it off, you can squeeze it off, you can do whatever it is you need to do. So there's one that will fit my back paw. It's too thick, so I'm just going to scathe the edge off. Like that. Okay. Sometimes it helps as well if you cut the back edge off because it fits on there beautifully then. Really nice. You don't have to play about too much with it. A little bit of the Fimo glue. Liquid clay, you shouldn't really say glue, liquid clay. It's gel, liquid gel. Okay. With your pokey tool, you're just going to push it down, push it on, like that. Like I say, you don't have to get it so it's perfect, because that's not really what we're after. Right, this one's quite small again, so I'm going to take this around the other side of the back foot. Oh, that looks good. That's a good fit. So again, I might try a little bit of... Um, PVA glue, just see what the difference is, um, ooh, how it, it sort of sits and, and fixes, how easily each of them sort of do. Right, so this is my PVA glue lid or bottle, so just a little bit. If there's too much on there, brush it off, and you should have a tea towel next to you or a cloth or some sort of something to wipe your hands on. Oop. Okay, so with your po pokey stick again. All right, Ted. All right, baby. Okay, and just make it so it's in at the bottom and it looks as though it's kind of attached to the foot. All right, so just you have to pick him up and pull his leg out a little bit and squeeze it around so it goes and looks like it's actually attached. That's okay. Okay. So we'll do the same with that back leg. If you notice, I've got a bit of a crease in the back of the neck. That won't matter too much because we're going to put hair along there. Okay. So that's pretty much on there. What's the matter, Tedlet? Hey, teddy bear? Right, so we're going to get the front ones done now. So just pull them out a little bit so you've got somewhere to work. And uh, we're just going to do exactly the same again. Just roll it around in your fingers. And uh, that's it. And then just fit it on. Okay, we're going to use this again. This is just PVA glue that just my husband put in a bottle for me. Um, it used to contain knit, knit stuff, but it's not something my daughter ever really gets. So we tipped out the contents. It was a very, very old bottle. It was just something I sort of bought to put on the side. You know, it's one of those situations where you get a letter home. There is knits in her classroom and amongst her class friends. So we thought, oh dear, better get some just in case. We never actually used it, so it was very, very out of date when we looked at it. And uh, he cleaned the bottle out thoroughly for me. And um, it works really well with PVA glue in it. So it's surprising what you've got around the house that will actually uh, work and, and uh, work for your, your benefits and your needs. Okay, so now we're doing the other one. See, he's got his head down again. Come on, lift your head up, mate. I'm not going to put set teeth in this one because he's not that kind of donkey, I don't think. He doesn't look like it, but I will show you how to do it. So if you do want to put it in, you can. 
Okay. The trouble is, every time you look at it, you'll find something else you're not happy with. So you'll just kind of mess about with it, even when you're doing other pieces. Oh my life. Alright, oh, Dad. Daddy! Always makes my hand shake when I put this stuff on. Because I have to squeeze the bottle. And obviously, I have an arthritis in my hands. Sometimes I struggle to put it and squeeze it out the bottle. There, so this with Fimo is actually better for getting out the bottle than what that is. So, okay, so that's on. So that's the white finished with. So we'll put that away. Don't waste any bits. If you've got some that's gone slightly black, don't put them with the, the, good, the good stuff back in the packet. But do put it away. Um, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to do black hoofs. So we're just moving back a little bit. I'm going to put the lid back on that. Oh, no, wrong one, that one. So it's not exposed for too long. A little bit of grey there. I was leaving around the bottom of my lamp, which, by the way, folks, it's not dirty. It's just so old, it's just marked, and it it's just doesn't matter how hard you clean it, it doesn't come up clean anymore. It's... Um, too hard. I don't know if you'll notice, that's where I keep my uh, hair clipped. Okay, so we're going to do nice thick. They've got to be a little bit thicker than the white, like twice the size. Okay, so into the sausage like we did last time. Okay, we're going to cut this now. It was going in the middle. So you want nice sized chunks. Teddy bear! What's going on with my cat? Probably the thunder. Okay. So see we've got a nice, nice thick round one. So I'm going to try that for the back leg. It's literally just playing about with it. I think that'll fit alright. You only want a little bit of a splash of uh, glue. And then just sort of tuck it on. See, it just looks good. There we go. And then again, exactly the same with the front one. Just going to tuck it down the back there and at the bottom so I don't want it to look like it's going to fall off. Oh, every time I touch it, I keep to have a nail on him. Okay. I think... That is pretty good. Okay, so next one. If it's too small or it's too big, you just take some off, put some on, whichever works. There you go, look. That one works well. So I'm going to pull it off. It sticks very well, the, the black does. It's It must be the pigment in the black. I want a little bit. I'm not even going to rub it around because when I put it on it will just squish out. There we go. So it's just switched around. There we go. Oh, now I've put nothing. Okay. So the next side. This I can tell might be a little bit big right now. So we go for bigger hole. Which I think is the front one actually. Oh no, the back foot's fell off. It gets to the point where you're going to have to find something to stick him onto so that you don't have to move him about. Finding something there is not always that easy. Um, I will find something in a moment. Let me get his feet on and then we'll, we'll look and see what we can find. I usually use a baking tin. It's a square baking tin. It works very well. And then we put him in the oven on that with some foil over the top. Okay. Let 
and just push it on, squidge it out a bit, so just wipe it off. If you've got your towel, use your towel. And uh, oh, that foot. Proving to be a problem. Use your tools. A bit more thin there. There you go. Yeah, use your tools. Push it on. There we go. Right. Last hoof and then I'll go and find some um something to put it on with. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of glue around the ears because I'm not hundred percent happy with them. I just feel like they're falling, that was a bit much perhaps, but then with a with your tool just grab it all around the back. PVA, I I, I like PVA. You can't go wrong with it. And then anything that's still on there in a minute, I'll wipe off with my fingers. See, it works very well. I love PVA glue. Okay, so let me just wipe this off before it dries. Remember, PVA glue dries clear, so if you do leave any on him, it won't matter too much. But it definitely sticks, I think. The immediate, because it goes tacky, it goes um, pretty much immediately. It's very sticky. There we go. Okay, so we're going to use this now. This is the last, last one. A little bit of glue on it with the again we only want a little bit. It always makes me shake, sorry. Okay, that's gonna to be too much gonna to squidge out everywhere, which we don't want. Okay, there we go. Just squish it down so it's the same sort of size. Using your tool again, these are very good. I find these tools. Um I've got them in a the set, I've got some large ones. Um, and some smaller ones, grey tips and blue tips, but I always seem to revert back to this, this old broken tool, it's my old faithful, okay, there we go, right, hoofs are on, hoofs were on, right, let me go and find a, a tub, right, okay, so I've been and got um, my tin, it's just a square baking tin. I'm probably never going to use the tin because it's not the sort of thing that we uh, we use in this house. Because my husband does all the, he's very good. Um, I have noticed this is a more of a lead down donkey than my other one. If you put them side by side, they're very different. Very different in the face and even the body. This one's quite fat. If you can see. This one is quite a fatty, and this one is quite thin. But what that will do is allow me to put um, a lot more or longer hair on him, shall we say. So I'm going to start with the tail. We're going to use the black for that. And all we're simply going to do, and this is a very tedious job, but I like it. Um, but then I'm a bit strange, perhaps. Let's move Donkey out of the way a little bit over there. So we're just going to roll out black into long strips and fine strips, that's, that's very important, they've got to be fairly fine. Uh, the bottom ones you can do a little bit thicker than the top ones if you wanted to, if you wanted to get it even done with a little bit quicker, um, that's up to you. But basically, I'll cut that one in half now, put it in half, cut it in half. And just keep rolling it. This Fimo clay is amazing. It doesn't go um, cracked or holy. Or sometimes if you do this with like, um, I know for, for one thing with fondant, it can, when you roll it and it starts to go off, it doesn't um, like mix very well. It leaves like a hole inside it. So when you roll it, it collapses on itself. Um, and I'm pretty sure air drying clay as well would probably be the same. Um, if you didn't get a sort of a wiggle on 
and get it moving. So right, I'm going to do the tail. I'm going to cut this now. So the tail we only want smallish bits. Okay. When you've cut it and you think, oh, it's a little bit big, just roll it a little bit more. And you want a nice end on it anyway. So just like cutting up um, little bits. And some will be too big. Some will be too small. But that's, I mean, nobody's hair is unified unless you've been to the hairdressers. Which due to the COVID, I'm sure a lot of us haven't. I'm very lucky. My daughter's a hairdresser, so... But then I tell her I want a haircut and I have to wait about six months anyway. So, I don't mind. I should cut it actually just before I went on holiday. I come back from Cornwall a couple of weeks ago. And she cut it too small, too short. So I couldn't get it in a ponytail. I always wear it in a ponytail because I don't like it in my face. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't go in. Only part of it. So, I wasn't very pleased when I was on holiday in Cornwall, you can imagine. Sea breeze hair over face never mind it's gotten getting a little bit longer again now still thundering so I do apologize about that not that I can uh, do anything about that okay so the black always whether you like it or not will leave like a sheen on your board it's just it's here it's like a grease so just remember before you use any other colors and do any other different projects that needs cleaning off before you, uh, otherwise you'll come along with a different colour and then it will just annihilate the colour. So, right now all my pieces have ended up being too long, so I'm gonna just cut them down, just cut them in half. That one's all right. I want some long bits, but not that long. Mm, being being a short bit. Okay, so we'll pop a bit of glue around his tail, just around on the end of his tail. Like so, and then we're just gonna pick them up, roll them in your finger, and pop them on. That's literally it. Well, that's definitely getting closer. Make sure the end of it goes in the glue, otherwise, well, I suppose it'll just stick to itself. So, when it goes in the oven, because I won't take it off this tin now, it'll go in the oven on this tin. So, literally, just Popping it in, so they've got the glue. Okay, what I usually do as well is put a little thing of glue there, and then I come along with me a bit. Like so, and I dip the end in, like that, and then just sort of pop it on. If there's a lot of glue left over, I know the next one can just be put into it. That's it, let them spread out, so they're nice and... Uh, Nice and spread, and you can see the effect we're getting already. Now, if you want it to go one way, just sweep it round um, like this. So you just sweep it round. See that? That's the nice thing about the Fimo clay. You can put it where you want it, and it will stay there. You got your tool. Just kind of flatten down the tips in the glue, and then. Just move them around bit by bit, so just like that. Just like that, she says. Okay, all right, I'm going to put some more on there. Not many more because he's sort of not wanting to have too much of a bushy tail. A couple of longer pieces. and then just one long piece then I think I'm going to call that it um, cause if you look at his tail I think that's more than enough these you can roll them up you can curl them up you can pretty much do anything you want to the Fimo clay and it stays so you got a nice curl going on there Excuse me, because I'm using a new camera. So I've just got to get used to using it. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm going to turn him round. 
so that's just literally just a few on the end make sure they're well stuck down use your your tools and then make sure they're nice and it looks like it's meant to be like that okay so now we're going to start his, his uh, hair if you like so we'll just dip the end of that in glue so we're going to carry on with this bit we've cut here now we want shorter pieces because we want um, his fringe to start with is what we're going to do so just cut them like you did last time now this is really important that you have a nice finish on it otherwise what will end up happening is you'll end up with stumpy bits on the ends and it just won't look right so just make sure each end is nice and pointed like so dip it in the glue and stick it on okay and i'm afraid it's just a case now of of building it up the bottom ones i do do a little bit thicker because it just fills up the space don't forget you can curl these over make it look like he needs a jolly good haircut any that you find are a little bit longer turn it round and let it go down the neck Just like so there's no hard and fast rules about this it's just a case of you think to start with you look at it and you think oh my goodness it's just not working stick at it because it will it will sort itself out and it will it will start looking like it should do you can raise it up a little bit so you can see okay you can see that's starting to come forward so you need some longer pieces going down the front of his head a little bit more Okay, so I'm going to dip that in, and I'm going to put it in the middle there. Okay, there's a larger piece, I'm going to do that again. Wiping glue everywhere. Okay, I'm going to dip that one in the glue. Okay, we've run out, so that's what we've got so far. You can move them about, so if you don't like what you're seeing. Right, I don't like that one there, I think that needs... Okay, you can see he's starting to build herself up now. You don't want him to have too much of a forehead. This bit here, it needs to, to come down and cover not far off of his eyebrows. Right, those ones are quite thick that I've put on. And I don't like sort of working with, with too thick of stuff. So it's just a case of rolling it that we're doing. You want some nice thin bits. Some nice big thick bits. I'm going to cut that in half to make it easier to roll. Okay. Now my husband was going to go out and carry on with some more slabbing today, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. It's very wet out. So I might sit down later and do have a look and see about making some little jewellery bowls with my daughter, which would be nice. She's desperate to uh, star in one of these films one of these videos so it'll just be her hands but that'll be about it but we'll have a look and perhaps have a look at doing some of that in the dust clay later right okay so we've got one really thin one well, it's not really thin i've worked with thinner than that it's just a case of just getting them um, 
Well, at some point I'm going to make a wishing well as well. I made a fondant wishing well um, at, at, you know, for my granddaughter's birthday. And because of the Covid it all went peak toll and uh, she couldn't have a party for her first birthday. Which was a bit upsetting but couldn't be helped. It's nobody's fault, it's just how it is. But I've got a fondant one in the cupboard and it's starting to crack and crumble now. Um, so when her birthday does come along and she wanted a, a f well my daughter wanted for her a fairy mushroom cake. So we've got all the stuff. No doubt she'll choose something different because now she's got a little voice. Because um, her birthday was in March. Um, that bit's just not where it's gone in the um, corn flour. Just wouldn't roll. So we'll roll that one ourselves. Just as it is. It wouldn't go up the board. There we go. Okay. I'm going to cut that one in half because that's quite a large one. Or as close to half as we're going to get it. Okay. I'm just going to cut going up here. If we really want to build it up, I'm not going to cut any more than that though, because I might keep these ones, might end up going down his neck, because this might be enough for the top of his head. Okay. So, I haven't got very many this side, so we'll start putting some on this side. It doesn't matter about the ends, you're not going to see those, because you're going to have the neck. It's going to fill that um, space up, and it will go straight over the top, so don't worry about that. I like them when they look like they're supposed to be uh, needing a jolly good haircut. So nice and full. Get a curl on it if you want to. Get it so it's stood up. Whatever you, you kind of like. I like mine all stood up and messy and all over the place. And being somebody who suffers with arthritis, this is actually good exercise for my hands. Although some days I'll get up and I've had too much exercise for my hands and I can't move. They're not pleasant days. But today I've got a bit of backache going on. I don't know what's going on there. Right, when you put it down, don't forget you want a nice point on the end, otherwise it just won't look very good. Use some more of that other stuff there. Look. Oh, I don't know. Something like that. Something. Goodness me, it's raining outside. Don't worry about this back bit here. When we put on the neck ones, we're going to stretch them up so it, it just kind of, you'll have no end if you like with the neck ones, which is very clever. Um, right, okay, so I think that for me, oh we might put another one on that side look, we haven't got a huge amount there so we're going to move the end of that one, that was quite a long one, and we're just going to put a couple along there, side of that now. There we go, that's better. Much better. 
Okay, so they're quite thick, the ones that we've been using. So I won't use thinner ones until we get to the, the end. So these ones we want quite long. Uh, much longer than we've been using. Don't forget, they will go longer as well when you re-roll them a little bit if you need to. So, some of them you'll probably look at and think, jeepers, I need to redo that one. So what I do is I drag the body of this one through because literally it goes down and down there. So you'll have to decide where you want, which direction you want the the mane. Um, I always have mine going in one direction. I mean, you could have it going in two if you wanted to. I would, perhaps we'll try two this time, shall we? Let's we'll see what that looks like, shall we? There we go. Right, let's try two. Okay. Again, you need a nice end in each of the ends because you're going to... One end is the top, one end is the bottom. So you have one end on the top of his head and one end down his back. Dragging it through the blue. Again, these are still quite thick, the ones I'm using at the moment. So I will change to very, very fine when I do the top ones. Sorry. Looks like my daughter's trying to get my husband to play Minecraft or something like this, which he hates. She loves. That's a bit much. Just drag it down your board and it'll come back off. You've got your tool. If you're not happy with something, just go on in there and move it. Um, okay, so I've wiped a lot of glue in that one. I'm just going to stand that one up a little bit. That's it. Some of them you can just keep, sort of bring them in there. And then, like I said earlier, there's no hard and fast rules over this whole scenario. Just put it where you want to put it, each time. Okay, we've got to roll some more. So clean the table. The other thing that I do do is pop a black, um, which I haven't actually done on this one, but then we're going both sides, so it probably wouldn't matter. Normally, I put a black strip strip down the middle, glued on. It just um, hides any ends and all that sort of thing but it shouldn't matter on this one because we're doing both sides which I've not ever done before so this would be a bit of a, a bit of an experiment for me too right these ones we're going to make start making a bit a little bit thinner any fatter ones you come across you can just bring them down so it just sort of comes down onto his back a little bit um, well, I quite like to go down further than what I should do, I suppose. So we'll see how we get on, see what it looks like. So kids keep rolling. I'm going to cut this again because it's getting hard to roll. Somebody's in the rain using a disc cutter by the sounds of it or something. I feel sorry for it. Okay, so this one I'm just going to do this as well, and then we'll cut them into nice long. Well, I'm going to leave this one a little bit tubbier than this one, so that we can get some going down his back.
it right where you want to put it. Remember, make your ends. I'm not too worried about it down this back bit. But one end does have to be nice and nice finish on it. Otherwise, you need your tool. Just pop it into place. Sticking to me. Don't forget when these go in the oven as well, when you put it in the oven, it will um, harden up and it will stick and it won't move to where you've put it. So if it's not got glue on it at that point, don't panic. It's not the end of the world. As long as it's hardened fast and stuck where it's, you want it, it will be absolutely fine. So this bit we're just going to just sweep down. We're going to have different bits coming up and down there. So this one's going to go behind his ear. And just there you go. And then I've got another fattish piece, which is now really started to fill the gaps in now. So I'm going to have this one going down his back. There's a bit of a gap if you can see it. Just there. Oh, that's enough, I don't want that. I'll snip the end of that off actually because I don't think I want it quite that long. Oh, now it's come off. I'll probably not get it back into the same place again. No, there you go, look. Alright. So now we've got the thinner stuff. Which we're going to cut quite large. Quite long. Because we want this to kind of now cover over everything that we've done. So we're just going to use thinner stuff now. Which, as you can imagine, is it's a little bit more fiddly, but well worth it. I'm just going to stick it on wherever you want to. I won't have to water the garden. Well, my husband won't have to water the garden today. I'm sure he'd be pleased about that. I'm a keen gardener. Um, he used to be able to do a lot more than what I can do now. But he made, made me raised flower beds so I can plant to my heart's content now. I just can't maintain them as such. I do try and weed. Um, but perhaps in another video I'll um, take you out in the garden and just show you. What sort of thing we've got. I like passion flowers, they're probably my, my most favourite for the ramblers. Um, got a lot of the ice cream, white ones. So that'd be something else perhaps we could look at. Bring me tall down. Okay, so I don't like the way it's behind his ear at the moment, so I need to get some in there. Uh, that's it, that's better. If you can see now. It's a very thin one. So you don't want them really touching on the ends because that's what you're going to use for your bad haircut day. It's just going to stick out and you're going to curl it up and, and whatnot. Just think it looks lovely like that. Alright, one more bit before we've got to roll some more out. Clean your tools off on your your towel as well, or cloth, whatever you've got over to the side. Always make sure you've got something because guaranteed you'll need it. And if you've got that, it stops it sticking. So, 
Let me roll it a bit more out. Keep the sides almost at its finish point. So remember, we're going for thin ones now, which will go over the top. I'm just sort of filling any gaps and spaces now, which looks good. to make sure it's easier to roll because we want it quite thin hmm, got something stuck around the end of that now see what I mean is you need to keep your desk clean and tidy I think actually it's probably glue off the end of my fingers so I'll just wipe and clean them now okay it's just on my thumb okay done. So we'll just do this one. He's nearly at the point where he's going to go in the oven soon. I'm going to put a little bit more down on his back so he hasn't got such a bare back. Um, I suppose you could put a saddle on him if you wanted to or I don't know. If you made him stood up, which I think you'd probably have to use um, pins, or you could do his legs, put them in the oven, dry them and then put them on him. Or there's lots of different ways of doing it. Okay. Oh. So we're going to stick a couple more around here. I want to get some more up around on the top of his head, really. Again, just be sort of aware of any other curls in that area or any other pieces of hair that you can just kind of stand up. And I'm going to put one more piece down behind that ear because I'm not keen on so much ear showing. thin piece I think over the top of that and tuck that down there Probably no, no thunderstorms gone, which means my cats will calm down a little bit, and my dogs, I expect. I don't think they're very keen either. I used to have an old dog, Harley, and he was horrendous. He could tell me about 10 hours before it was coming, it was coming, because he'd just be so unsettled. Very clever boy. Okay, so this side we got exactly the same. So we're going to build up that behind the ear. We're probably going to have to do a, load, a couple more rolls as well. So let's just feed it in between. And then just let it drop. Rolling it so it's all different layers and whatnot. Okay. Okay. 
happy with that. I'm happy with it that side. So this has got to come around here. I'm not going to leave there like that because it's going to be a little curly bit. Well, not that you can see, I'm sorry. Let me just get this one into place and then I'll turn it as my dogs. Okay. I think one more down that side and then we can start going down the back. Right, now we can start going down the back properly now. So, both ends. Because we want this to come down this side as well, don't we? Because we're doing both sides. It's just a case of picking it up, popping it on. And then just checking each side. Make sure you can't see no grey between. Starting to form now, look. It's starting to look pretty good. So that's it from behind. So I'm going around to the front. I think we still got entirely too much hair at the front. Well, maybe not. It's just like I say, personal preference on what you like. Just need to split those two there, look. And pull him down the front. Come on, let go of each other. So, if we wanted to sort that out, you could just get some little ones and just dip the ends in and just tuck them in. Yeah, I feel like I need a few little bits at the front. He's got a short fringe. Looks a bit odd. So I don't need to roll huge, huge amounts this time. I'm just going to do one more roll. And I'm going to cut some little short ones off for the front. Build his fringe up a little bit. And then we're going to build up his back a little bit. And then I think he's ready for the oven. Brooks, that's handy. Nice and thin. Wow, that's good. This first bit we're going to cut a couple of small ones for the forehead. Remember if I cut them too long it doesn't matter. Because we can just cut them in half. Okay. You can see where the gaps are. You can see where it needs to be a little bit longer. So it's just a case of dipping it in. Make sure it's nice and rounded. Like that. Find a space and put some hair. Don't forget to tuck your end in. Okay. 
at some point I'm going to do some other animals and I think I'm going to go at I'd like to do a sheep there's a little woolly outside see if I can get some round woolly looking sheepy bits um, not really looking forward to doing that I will record myself when we do it for you I like the sort of comical looking animals oh, that one's not going to fit in there I'm just move them about where you have to and use your tool to just tap the end down Okay, and I'm just going to put another one down this side. Just in that little gap there, I think. Okay. Sometimes when you pull them like that, you can get a lovely finish on the end. Okay. And this isn't going to be very easy. Talk about fiddly. Once it's in there, you can play about with it then. And I'll flatten the end on that one. Ah, uh, oh, I need it as a, a peculiar bit. I can't see too much of it, so... And then the other bits just pop them over the top. So it's like three days again, so that's better. Okay, I've got one more little bit in the middle. I can see there's glue in there. I don't know there was any glue. Did you get it off your finger? You just tap down the back. That's it. Okay, so I think that's enough for the front. So this is what we've got so far. Let's put this front on, go around to the ears, look good. I'm happy with those. Just kind of swish the hair that way. Right, so what we're going to do is just finish off by now just adding these down the back. Swipping them out to the sides, straight down his back, wherever you want to put them. And they don't have to go too far up, so they'll be a little bit longer now. Like, that. like I said earlier, if you pull it, it makes nice ends. Still tuck your ends in, otherwise you'll be able to see them and they'll look horrible. Just gently tuck it in. And if you've got one that just doesn't look like it's tucked in very well, just put one over the top of it. So we'll just make a longer one like this. And just go straight over the top, look. Like that. Okay. We'll do another on the other side, not long. Let's just see the bit I'm not keen on, which is there. Another bit of a curly tail going on there. Curly, curly tail, curly hair. Okay. So I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to pull it in half. And I'm going to make it a long one. So it goes down his back like that. Okay. Well, I'm sorry it's taken so long to make this video, um, and it's quite a long one, but it is worth it, and sometimes, like I say, it's, it's don't rush these things, otherwise they won't end up looking how you want them to. So it's worth not, not sort of rushing and you know, getting them finished. So there we have one donkey. 
if you're as long as you're happy. You can add more hair to it if you want to, or you can leave it as is. It's entirely up to you. Curl the ends, both sides, top and bottom, top and bottom. So it looks like he's got really messy hair. I like donkeys with messy hair. Trying to be careful, like I've done there. One piece of hair is kind of squashing another piece of hair. You don't want it to sort of squash each other. You want it to sort of make it stick out, if you see what I mean. Like that. There we go. There we go. Right. So thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. Like I say, I'm sorry that it's taken so long. I'm going to speed time lapse some of this so that um, it doesn't take quite so long for the video. And I will come back. Well, they, I mean, if I come back after, he's gone hard in the oven. 30 minutes on 110. It's my case is a hundred, uh, 90, I have to put mine on. But I'm very pleased with him and he looks pretty special. As promised, I was just showing you, he's been in the oven. 30 minutes on 90 degrees in our oven. So at the moment he's stuck to the tin, which is normal. So what you have to do is just gently... Oh my goodness, he is really stuck. There we go. Ease him off. <coughs> um, you might need something just to lever him up with. So just a small like spatula or something like that. Oh. Ah, there we go. Okay, so there we have him. Our new donkey. All hard. Looking good. And I think his hair looks really lovely. Um, he will be sprayed with some top coat. Um, but I've got a couple of other bits I I want to sort of add to it before I do him. Um, but he's literally everything is is solid on him. His hair goes like a bendy. It's fantastic. So now I have two. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Crafts at Home with Lisa. Um, I'm new to YouTube, so it's very difficult just starting out. Um, so that I do appreciate the support. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, it won't be long, and I'll be sort of producing another video on something else. Uh, if there's something you particularly would like to see, please pop it in the comments or email me, and the email address is below, and I will answer you as sort of pretty quickly. Um, so other than that, happy claying. Be McLean, um, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.